Welcome back to The Real Deal on NPD with Myra. Narcissists are known for their manipulative tactics. And uh, these smear campaigns is just another example of how they try to control and they try to damage the reputation of their target. But why do they, you know, why do they resort to something so low as a smear campaign? Is this, this is some dirty, grimy stuff. It's low, it, it's some grimy stuff. So we need to understand what is their motivation and shed some light on the behavior so that we can help victims navigate this very difficult situation. So look, the smear campaign is a narcissist attempt to tarnish their victim's image, their reputation, their credibility, or their character. And why do they do it? That ego, that fragile ego. So look, when their flaws, their wrongdoings are exposed and it threatens them, their self-image, their reputation, instead of messing with theirs, they want to mess with yours. So they'll launch a smear campaign and the aim is to discredit you, shift the focus away from their faults and, uh, you know, to shift it on to you so that they still look good and you look bad. So another reason they use this is because of power and control. They want to stay in control of the situation and come out on top. So by spreading these false rumors and negative information, they create doubt and mistrust in the minds of other people. So it also serves as punishment. Mm -hmm, I said punishment. Mm -hmm, they're going to punish you. Yeah, because somehow you've crossed them. It might just be in their little bitty mind. It might not even be real, but somehow you've crossed them. Uh, so, you know, when you don't meet their needs or desires without question, or if you challenge or reject them, then these babies feel wounded. Uh -huh. When they're wounded, they seek revenge. So they want to punish you. Mm -hmm. They want to punish you and they want to humiliate you. Uh, they, they, want to, they want to just drag you. Yeah, so because you're a threat. You're an enemy now. And so they use these campaigns to maintain control and power. They want to manipulate the perception while they are seen favorably and they're damaging your credibility and social standing. So they use this to spread false narratives and they do it through gossip, social media. They rally up all their flying monkeys to support their version of events. So these narcissists portray themselves as the victim, uh -huh, the righteous one. They're the victim of you and you are problematic and untrustworthy. This narcissist is using reverse psychology to control the narrative and to maintain power. So look, this can lead the victim to question their own reality causing them emotional distress, destroying their confidence and their sense of identity. And this is done during the devaluation and discard phase of narcissistic cycle of abuse. Now, here are 10 reasons why these narcissists might engage in a smear campaign. One, protect the facade. Now, they've created this facade over many, many years, and uh, they have this fragile self-esteem, so they got to protect their self-image uh -huh, as being flawless and superior. So they tend to present this false image that enables them to draw people in and manipulate their surrounding environment. So look, if there's a chance that you know who the real them is and you're likely to expose it, we're going to discredit you. So nobody will believe you about them. So it helps them maintain their facade by deflecting attention away from all of those faults and secrets in the closet. And they project them onto you. Number two, maintain control. So we know they have a strong need for control. They don't control themselves, but they want to control you and everybody else. Yeah. So their sense of control is easily challenged. You know, they feel threatened. And so, uh, you know, they want to control the narrative and all the perceptions. And what they do is discredit you so that they can ensure that they remain in a position of power and dominance. Number three, avoid accountability. Th these folks wouldn't know accountability if it hit them in the face. Uh, so look, when they're faced with accountability or criticism, they resort to blaming others. She did it. She's so mean. She did all these things to me. Yeah, she doesn't even know me. Hmm. Yeah, she, she's abusing me. She's doing this and that. She's cheating. Okay. Look, so they, they ship blame and they make the victim appear responsible for any issues or conflict. Number four, they seek revenge. So look, you might have, I don't know, somehow accidentally caused a narcissistic injury. These folks are sensitive. They don't want to hear any criticism. So they, they perceive injury where there is none. So if you break up with this narcissist, which you should, speak up for yourself, challenge them, you know, question their superiority or in th their entitlement. You can cause these babies a narcissistic injury. Oh, oh, they're so hurt. So look, you're injuring their fragile self-esteem and they want revenge on you. So instead of confronting you like a grown person, they're going to engage in a nasty smear campaign. Mm -hmm. Number five, reinforce their superiority. So look, they believe there's only winners and losers and they want to win at all costs. So they see themselves, they're, they're superior, baby. They're entitled. Yeah, so they're the winner. So they got to discredit you because then that makes them feel superior and it validates their sense of entitlement. So this narcissist, if they're jealous of you, which they probably are, mm -hmm, uh, they feel that you're standing in their way you know, of success, of, of getting a man or attention or a job, they're going to launch an attack mm -hmm, to bring you down because they got to humble you. Yeah, there can only be one, one winner, one loser. Number six, isolate the victim. Uh, by tarnishing the victim's reputa reputation, uh, they want to also isolate them from support. The isolation makes it easier 
for this narcissist to continue abuse and main con maintain control over the victim and prevent other people from supporting the victim or even believing the victim's side of the story because they've had so many people come up against one person. Here are some signs that might indicate that you're being targeted. Number one, people are turning against you. People you don't know are coming up with all kinds of stories about you. Um, you know, this is how they assert control over, you know, kind of isolating you. People, you know, that you were once close to are behaving differently. They seem distant without any apparent reason. This could be a, a sign that you are a victim of a smear campaign. Uh, there might be, you know, a negative shift in your relationships. You're isolated. You're cut off from social circles, friends, professional networks, and they will call your job and lie on you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if people start to avoid you without any explanation, it's possible that this two-faced lying ass narcissist has been telling a distorted narrative, painting you in a bad light. Number two, hearing stories or rumors about yourself. Girl, I heard you a prostitute now and you own drugs and, and you treat children bad and what's going on? So look, you hear these rumors, false accusations that seem to come out of nowhere. They don't align with reality, they're straight lies. They're spread through gossip and social media. You might be a target of a narcissistic smear campaign. Uh, you may experience a pattern of misrepresentation and distortion of your words, your actions, your intentions by a particular individual or a group of narcissists. In some cases, you might be confronted by people who seem to have received this distorted version of events and false information about you. Girl, I heard, you know, you was beating up on him and, and you cheated on him and really? That's not the way I remember it. Number three, complete denial. At some point, you might begin to find obvious signs uh, that somebody's been trying to undermine your credibility and tarnish your reputation. It's that old line, pathological narcissist, the pathological liar. So look, you know, if you don't want to confront this folks, these folks, because they're going to deny the allegation. So they're, they're not going to own up to their wrongdoing. They're going to be the victim. All right. So they might say something like, I would never say something like that. No, no, no. I'm supportive of you. I am. So what they do is turn the tables. And so uh, they may use your accusations of evidence as being malicious and you're attempting to harm them. Number four, gaslighting. Now look, the person orchestrating this smear campaign spreads false information about you. And they also manipulate the narrative by making it seem like you are the one who was at fault. So it forms a large scale you know, form of gaslighting. So they flip the story. They make you out to be the perpetrator and uh, not only discredit you, but they also distort reality to a larger audience. So this manipulation can confuse and disorient people who might have been neutral or unaware of the situation. It leads them to question your integrity and believe the false narrative that's created by this two-faced narcissist. So look, people will begin to doubt your character and your actions based upon false information uh, presented by this manipulator. Uh, they place themselves in a position of power while they leave you feeling powerless and victimized. Dealing with narcissistic smear campaigns is challenging. I'm, I'm gonna tell you from, from experience, it's challenging. It's, it's crazy, it's, it's stressful, it's weird. Why would someone do this to you? Um, why would somebody make you out to be someone you're not? Uh, but there are some strategies you can employ to protect yourself and minimize the impact of these campaigns. So here are 10 ways to deal with a narcissistic smear campaign and also maintain your professional reputation. Number one, document everything. Keep a record of all interactions, incidents related to the smear campaign. It's gonna serve as evidence if you have to take it to court or to defend yourself. Number two, stay calm and composed. So look, they want you to act the fool. They do, so they can validate what they've said. So you need to stay composed. Uh, you don't want to react emotionally or engage in arguments with these people uh, because it only fuels their efforts to discredit you. Number three, seek professional help. Get with a counselor or a therapist who specializes in narcissistic abuse. Uh, they can provide guidance, help you cope with the emotional toll of the campaign, and help you to develop strategies to respond effectively. Number four, educate yourself. Learn more about this personality disorder and the smear campaign. Uh, you need to understand this narcissist behavior, their tactics, and it's going to give you a better understanding of what you are dealing with and also allow you to respond in a more informed manner. Number five, limit engagement. Minimize your interactions with this narcissist and their flying monkeys. Mm -hmm. Engaging with them will only provide them with additional ammunition to use against you. Number six, build a support network. So they want you isolated. So, so surround yourself with people. Mm -hmm. Trusted friends, family members, colleagues who can provide you with emotional support and act as a witness to your character and integrity. Number seven, maintain professionalism. So stay focused on your professional goals and responsibility. Continue delivering high quality work and maintain your professional reputation regardless of this smear campaign. Number eight, stay active on social media, meaning, you know, work type stuff. So you can showcase your expertise, your talents, your achievements so that you can counteract negative uh, narratives being spread about you. Facebook, you might want to get off because they're looking for what you're doing personally so they can 
talk about it and, and lie about it and just make up stuff. Number nine, consider legal resources. I'm sorry, resources and recourse. Uh, so, you know, they cross legal boundaries. They want to damage your personal and professional life. So you might need to explore getting yourself an attorney and your options for legal action. Number 10, seek closure. So once the smear cam campaign has subsided and you need to heal, you need to recover. It's a lot. So, you know, self-care practices, rebuild your confidence, your self-esteem. You have to remember, this is challenging. It's not easy to deal with, but you can employ some of these strategies uh, that can help with this situation and protect your reputation and your emotional well-being. Remember to document evidence, maintain boundaries, and seek professional guidance to help navigate this very insane situation. So by implementing these strategies, you can regain control. Take your control back. Mm -hmm. Maintain your integrity. They want to take power and control away from you. Snatch it back. For more insights and resources on handling narcissistic behavior, like, subscribe, and comment on our platform to join a very supportive community and also be notified of additional videos on the topic.